Hello, my name is Einar Jordan, and I'm going to show you today how I prepare my fetal matter uh, capsules for FMT, fetal matter transplant. Um, I am not a doctor or a certified dietitian. I am a, a quality engineer in the medical device industry. I also do process engineering. Um, pharm I've done pharmaceuticals, tissue banking, etc on for over 25, 20 something years uh, on a highly regulated environment. And this is a, a process that I developed for this do it at home, which is not really a regulated process since you're doing it by yourselves and for yourself. Um, you, sh you can modify these. So these are just me giving you guidance on best practices uh, to minimize the risk of contamination uh, on your sample. Your sample is already heavily contaminated with over 500 bacteria, trillions and trillions of, uh, of them. So you don't want to add to that. So the first thing I do is I try to find this, a place in the house where there isn't uh, direct air conditioning, air blowing in and circulating. If you have pets, you, you, you really want to keep them away and other people and do as much cleaning as you possibly can. Also, ceiling fans are, are you, you may not want to have them running at the same time. Ideally, you will have uh, uh, an extractor or you will be near an extractor. So, the first thing I do is I clean before, I also clean after with isopropyl alcohol at least 70% or higher. Uh, you don't have to sterilize all your equipment. Again, your product is already very, very dirty and you don't have a, a enclosed environment, so you will still have some contamination that you can avoid, but it's, you, you want to minimize it as much as possible. Um, so after I clean with isopropyl alcohol, I put a liberate amount. The reason I use mostly isopropyl alcohol is because it evaporates and it leaves no water trace. So I do clean unidirectional. First of all, there will be nothing in the table, so I'll clip one direction just to push things out and after three to five wipes, I'll just throw a wipe away. Um, you know, use your your best judgment on this. I, I also, you really don't need to wear gloves or, or PPE, but I find that that is much easier. Uh, if I have a spill, I can just remove and throw it away. If I have a spill, I also, I, I don't go on cleaning them. I just blot it with some tissue and I keep on moving on. Um, so you're gonna need Ideally, a couple of containers so you can put the, the lids uh, for the caps and the actual capsule. Uh, and you can use it also for capsules that you don't want to use. Uh, I'm just putting this as an example in here. Uh, it's already filled with some uh, product. So this is not as the sample itself. This is actually a slurry from a gardening uh, bacteria that is used for houseplants but um, it's very similar to what you're going to use. So I use it, I'm using it in an example. I'm also not using uh, the actual sample itself. I'm using a piece of wood so I can show you. Um, so I mix distilled water with a pinch of salt. You can also buy saline solution or phosphate buffer solution, or if you have none of it, just a pinch of salt and water will do. I make about 50 to 75 ml, because more than that will make it very diluted and you will need a lot more capsules. Uh, so the, the, the more concentrator probably it is, the better. Um, uh, 30 ml, each, each capsule is gonna take about uh, 500 microliters, which is half an ml. Uh, so, I mean, you can do the math. So I take my sample and in the sample, oh, sorry, I forgot. So I divide my working area between clean, work in, in progress, and dirty. And I use a, a large glass of water with ice so I can take the, the capsules as soon as I make them because the longer they take, the more they start to, to break apart. As you can see, this one is already, this has been here less than five minutes. And in 15 minutes, they will dissolve uh, in the presence of, of liquids or acids. And so you, you wanna consume them as soon as possible. So I make one at a time or two at a time. Uh, if I have uh, some container, if you have some container where you can put them, maybe you can make a few more, but I wouldn't 
be doing too many at the time. I also have a better than average dexterity, so it's very easy for me to use syringes. So you can use a 10cc syringe, anything larger than that, it will be hard to manipulate. Uh, I have, uh, uh, what you call it, a, a pipetter, so it's much easier for me to calibrate and, and uh, I'm sorry, calibrate now, set it up at this exact volume that I need. So you will first get your sample and you will add the water needed or the saline solution needed. I seal the bag so I don't have accidents. And then I press. And when I press, I try to spread it out and make it as flat as possible. And after that, I spend two or three minutes manipulating it so it, it breaks down as much as possible. You will always have uh, thick uh, pieces that are just uh, organisms that have not been broken down. There is not much you can do about that. I will leave them. I wouldn't really try to make it all uh, dissolve. Two, three minutes of, of, of manipulating the sample will be fine. If it wasn't broken down, it's just because bacteria is unable to break it down. So I will just leave that behind. So I take my sample and I use a sifter, uh, just a regular uh, household sifter. With a, I try to use clear container so I can see better. So I will pour it in even if the sample is in, and I will use a, a spatula. Uh, preferably you want to use stainless steel and glass. Anything that's wood will, will absorb either the sample and or all the organisms in the air, more yeast, and you do not want to add that to your sample. So try to use plastic and crystal and, and, and stainless steel as much as possible. So once I have the sample in here, the liquid will go right through and you can press it. I've seen people pressing it. If it wasn't dissolved with this, you're really not gonna get a lot more bacteria. You're just pushing through now uh, pieces of, of, of it that, you know, they, they just, the bacteria could not break it down. So once I'm done with that, and I, I keep a container where I keep either a, a trash can or a container where I remove the, the, the parts of the sample that are still solid and they create a lot of odor, a lot of smell, and that, that's just gonna mess with your head, so you want it out of the way. So as soon as it's done, you can, you can still designate an area here, remove it as far as possible so it does not affect the rest of the process. The sample itself is still going to smell uh, a little bit, but not as much. So again, I still got my dirty area, and if I have a problem, I uh, spill in my hands, I can just remove my gloves, get a new pair of gloves, don't have to open the sink uh, because you know the sink itself, I try not to work directly on top of the sink because the sink itself is pretty dirty. Uh, you can clean it as much as possible, but unless you're closing the actual faucet of the sink, the sorry, the, uh, the plumbing of the sink, you, may, you can still get bacteria just popping out of there with air. And that's something that you probably don't want. So once I have my slurry, and you can see, it just pretty much looks like coffee grinds and water. Uh, I just grab each capsule. I fill them. And you don't wanna fill them all the way to the rim because I have found that when you fill them to the rim, it starts breaking down. It's harder to put the top on top on, on the capsule. So I put the capsule, I press it, I swallow it. This is why I have the water here. I swallow it, I drink water, and cablamo. That's it. So this is the process that I use, and you can use a, a different process yourself. Um, you can modify it based on what you have available. I wouldn't uh, sweat uh, too much. This is, um, this is a homemade process and uh, uh, the, the idea behind this video is to kind of minimize the risk because there is a lot of things that could go wrong without you realizing it. Um, and uh, again, you don't want to have animals any nearby. You want to remove anything that's actually physical. So at the end of the procedure, I clean everything with soap, then 
I put her in a solution of bleach, 5% or greater. Uh, once I clean it with soap, you want to remove any residue that you find, any solids. Uh, then I put it all in bleach for about an hour. I take it out again. I clean it with soap and water. I discard the sponges. They're not very expensive. And then I put it to dry. I don't sterilize it before I use it because if there is still residue of, of, uh, of bleach or something else in it, it could kill the bacteria that you're trying to, to implant in your system. Uh, and this is the end of the tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, reach out. If you have any uh, challenges, I, I will do my best to give you whatever advice I, I, can, I can give you based on, on my years of experience in the industry. I, I, I did a lot of tissue processing and uh, the smells are, are, are very difficult, especially with human cadaveric tissues, so living or dead. Um, uh, feces is not, it's, it's, it's not different, if, if not worse. I'll try to make a separate video to help you with the mind game and, uh, and help you with the smell so it does not interfere with the gagging reflex that, that you, they're certainly gonna trigger. Even I had a, a hard time at first before I started the process. And when I did the first process, I was able to do it just fine. Um, so thank you so much. Please subscribe. I'll continue to try to make more videos to help you with this procedure. Um, I hope you all feel better and get better. And be careful. This, uh, this could be dangerous if done wrong, if pick the wrong donor and so on. Thank you so much.